birth father is African American and Nottaway Indian from the mountains of Virginia. And I was adopted by the Franti family who are second generation immigrants from Finland. And they came to our country seeking a better way of life for their family. And they had three kids of their own and then they adopted myself and another African American son. And so I grew up in this really mixed melting pot of a family and, and just to round things out, I have one sister who's a lesbian and one brother who's a police officer. And my mom taught primary education in the public schools for 35 years. And every day she goes to school and she teaches 30 kids how to read and write and take care of each other. Yeah. And then she'd come home to us, five kids, and we would just be ripping the house to shit. <laughs> My mom would come home and she'd be like, oh my God, 30 kids, and these kids are, these five are worse than the 30 of these guys. And then she'd organize us, she'd have us doing things. She'd have us like chopping vegetables. And she'd have us cooking in the kitchen. And then she would send us out on the street to play. And that was kind of like her time to just chill out and just like stir and just zen out for a moment. And she would tell us when we went out into the streets, she would say, it doesn't matter if you're playing with a kid who comes from a different neighborhood, if they go to a different school, if they play on a different soccer team or a different baseball team, or if they have two moms and dads, or if they go to a church or a mosque or a synagogue, or if they're new to our country, or they speak a different language at home. Right. You're supposed to treat every kid that you meet the way that you expect to be treated. That's right. Maybe a little bit better. Said if you didn't, then when you got home, Woody the Spoon was going to come after you. She's a tough lady. But um, right now, it's like I feel so stressed out on a daily basis. There's two things that I do every morning. The first thing I do is I kiss my wife, Sarah. And then I check my phone. And lately, I'm like, I'm using like the one eye, two finger technique, which is like this. And, you know, it's like just in the last 10 days, there was uh, a ban on transgender people in the military. And then the day after, we were going to nuclear war with North Korea. And then after that, there was a situation in Charlottesville. And now there's a hurricane where we just left. We just played in Texas the last three days. And, uh, you know, and now the disheartening of someone who was doing racial profiling. And I just think, what happened to the country that I grew up in? I just feel like it's, it's slipping out of our fingertips. And so, uh, today I wanted to be here not in the spirit of pessimism and negativity. I wanted to be surrounded by people in optimism and love. Because there are still millions of people in this country and billions of people around this planet who believe that every single one of us deserves to be happy, healthy, and equal. Every day I wake up and turn my phone on. I read the news of the day just as it's coming down. I do my best not to let it get me down. I try to keep my head up, but this is Babylon. This world's in crisis, we try to fight it, this changing climate. The scientists and the politicians divided by it. So many ways we could solve it, but they were never silent. This mountain's tumbling down, but still we try to climb it. It's in the Torah, Quran, and in the Bible. Love is the message, but somehow we turn to rivals. It's come to people always picking up their rifles. Another school getting shot up homicidal. Some people trying to live fly, some people trying to get high. Some people losing their mind, some people trying to get by. When you look in my eyes, you see the sign of the times And we are looking for the same thing, yeah but What if this song was number one? Would it mean that love had won? Would it mean that the world was saved? And no guns are being drawn today? And what if everybody had a job? And nobody had to break a law. What if everyone could say, yeah, yeah. That it's good to be alive today. Yeah. It's good to be alive today. Come on up, business. That it's good to be alive today. Nobody say people used to forsake it when 
day would hear a siren that kept us on its way, but now they only think of violence. Another youth in the streets, the police is in a conflict, and now we hear the guns click. Yo, you bold the prices, I just taking heads off. I don't describe the village, and now the kids all signing up to be social. But they are winning now to do the killing now. But are you winning now? So politicians out there making up some problems, trying to tell the people that they can solve them with TV shows and sound bites and quotes. But everybody knows that it's all about the cash flow. They're telling you and me we're making progress, we're turning to the millions who are jobless. It's like a player's for the billions of dollars to get the votes. You got to make it rain in Congress. Some people trying to lose lives, some people trying to get high, some people losing their minds, some people trying to get by. When you look in my eyes, you see the sign of the time. We are looking for the same thing, yeah. What if this song was number one? Would it mean that love had won? Would it mean that the world was saved? And no bombs are being dropped today. What if everybody had a job? And nobody had to break a law? What if everyone could say, yeah? to be alive today. Put your hands up, hold on. It's good to be alive today, yeah. That it's good to be alive today. Bombs are being dropped today. What if everybody had a job and nobody had to break a law? What if everyone could say, yeah? 